Good morning, everybody. My name is Philip, and as mentioned, I'm the CEO and co-founder of StarCloud, and we're building data centers in space. So this time, in two days' time, I will be at the Cape Canaveral Space Force Base, nervously awaiting the launch of our first spacecraft. And what's particularly special about this spacecraft is it is the first time that anybody has tried to launch an AI data center to space. In particular, we'll be the first to launch the NVIDIA H100 chip, which is about 100 times more powerful GPU or AI compute than has ever been operated in space before. And in fact, this is the first step in a much larger vision to build almost all data centers in space. And I'll today make the case for this, this idea. The idea that it will soon make much more sense with the abundant energy and cold temperatures to build data centers in space than it does to build them on Earth. But first, I know what you might be thinking. If you've ever seen a data center, you will know they are absolutely massive. And so it can be difficult to imagine what this might look like in space. And so I'd like to start by showing you a short 15-second concept video uh, of what a data center in space might look like. Um, so here we have, this is a Starship-sized spacecraft delivering about 100 tons, a 40-megawatt-sized uh, module of compute connected to a central 5-gigawatt cluster with a 4-kilometer by 4-kilometer solar panel and a 1-kilometer by 4-kilometer radiator down the back there. How is this possible? Well, it will be possible with the new launch vehicles which are coming online, in particular with the Starship launch vehicle that SpaceX is currently building. So some of you might know this. Um, Starship is expected to lower the cost of launch by between 10 and 100x. That's interesting, but what's really impressive is it will increase the capacity, as in the amount of tons per year that we can get to space, by 1,000x or more. And the reason that's possible is because it is the first ever fully reusable spacecraft. So for example, with the current rocket, Falcon 9, if you build a new one every day for a year, at the end of the year, you still only have one Falcon 9 because it's dispendable. Whereas with Starship, if you build a new one every day for a year, at the end of the year, you have 365 Starships because it's reusable. And they're planning on building much more than one per day. So really, the, the capacity we can launch is going to go up by at least 1,000 decks or more. But we're not starting there. We're starting much smaller. And the thing we're launching next week is a small sat. It's about 60 kilograms, the size of a small fridge. It's going to have, as I mentioned, the first high-powered GPUs uh, ever launched to space, the H100. It will be the first to do training and inference. Uh, training. This is the satellite here on the screen. Um, first to do training and high-powered inference in space. It will be the first to run a version of Gemini. Um, so yeah, ma many interesting firsts. Then in October next year, we've got a second satellite. It's about 100 times more power generation than the first one. It will have by far the largest commercial radiator in space. It will have the, the Blackwell architecture, for those that you know from, from NVIDIA. And then we keep scaling up from there every year until we hit, in the early 2030s, the full Starship payload uh, bay size, which, as I mentioned, is about 100 tons or 40 megawatts. So how is it that a data center in space will have cheaper energy costs than a data center on Earth? Well, let's run the comparison with a, 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 a solar-powered data, uh, data center on Earth, since solar is the cheapest form of energy we have on Earth. Well, you have three large costs of a, solar, of a solar project on Earth. The first large cost, is, and in North America, this is actually the largest cost because it's linked to energy, is the cost of permitted land. The second largest cost is the cost of battery storage because we need to charge uh, batteries during the day so that we have power at night. And the third largest cost is the cost of the solar cells themselves. OK, so how does that compare within space? Well, on the plus side, in space, we don't need permitted land. In space, we don't need battery storage because the, uh, we ha you know, have 24-7 solar power, so we don't need batteries or, or backup. And we need six times less solar cells, since one square meter of solar panel in space produces six times the energy of one square meter of solar panel on Earth. So your two largest costs are gone, and your, your third largest cost is a sixth the size. But what are the additional costs in space? Well, I mentioned we need a sixth the solar, but we have one extra large cost, and that main large extra cost we have is the launch cost. And so you can clearly see there is a break-even point where the launch cost is below the cost of permitted land, batteries, and solar. And we see that break-even point to be around $500 per kilo to low Earth orbit, 
which is, uh, for comparison, Starship is targeting between uh, around $50 per kilo to low Earth orbit. So we're well within range of what's coming down the line. But I hear you cry. Space is hard. Um, and aren't there sort of technical challenges with space that make this, uh, make, make this more challenging? Well, yes, space is hard. And yes, there are technical challenges. Um, but they are all solvable at a cost that is either equal to or lower than the cost on Earth. The two largest costs we have are number one, um, the, or the two biggest technical challenges, sorry, is how do we dissipate all of this heat from the chips in a vacuum? And number two, how do we make the chips work in a high radiation environment? Well, for the first one, about half our team is working on building a very large, low cost and low mass deployable radiator. And the second half of our team is working on, for, for, for the radiation, testing all of these chips in a um, proton beam and heavy ion particle accelerators. So, I mean, there's many other solutions coming soon around laser communication, around um, orbital debris mitigation, and around things like uh, robotic maintenance. I mean, that for the first time, the technology really is there to make data, data centers in space a reality. This time, in two days' time, I'm going to be watching the, the launch of the first AI data centers to space. In 10 years' time, most new data centers will be being built in space for the energy. And who knows, maybe in 50 years' time, we may have started work on a Dyson sphere to harness the full power of our sun. Thank you. <laughs>